find some targets to do. Please stand. On behalf of our rector, Reverend Cynthia Knapp, we welcome you to this service of morning prayer on this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Morning prayer begins on page 78 of the Book of Common Prayer, or you may follow in your service leaflet. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence with penitent and obedient hearts, confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Please kneel if you're capable. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and thought word indeed by what we have done and by what we have left undone we have not loved you with our whole hearts we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves we are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son jesus christ have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open up our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please stand. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Saying together to Vinette, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, to, that today you would hearken to his voice. Let's read the psalm responsively. 
thy half first. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing sing praises praises to my God God. while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth. For there is no help in them. When, When they breathe their last, they return to earth. And in that day, their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Whose hope is in the Lord, their God. Who has made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them. Who keeps his promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed. And food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and the widow and frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Say to those who are, uh, who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's say together the canticle. Glory to to God God in the the highest highest, and peace peace to to his his people people on earth. earth. Lord God, God, heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is wearing, while to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convinced by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said you shall not commit adultery also said 
you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now this woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying this, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home found the child laying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd and put his fingers in his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. What is your faith rooted in? Now, I don't expect an immediate answer to come to your brain or your heart, but I just want you to think about that question. What is your faith rooted in? Now, this answer changes according to where we are in life. I remember as a child, I thought that I could pray for something and then miraculously it would appear. And a perfect example of this is my feelings toward sports. Now, I blame my parents for ruining my promising professional baseball career. I guess I didn't have talent either. But anyway, they made me, instead of playing baseball for schools and whatnot and Little League, they made me play church league youth softball. Now, if you know anything about church leagues, they tend to be the most unchristian thing on the entire planet. Am I right? But this wasn't so bad. And I grew to love it. I even grew to really look forward to each and every game. And most of these games happened on Thursday evenings. And sometimes, as life often 
does, or rather the weather often does, it throws a curveball at us. I remember I would see clouds in the skies and hear the forecast that probably our game would be rained out. I would go outside, a teenager, and I would look up at heaven. I'd say, God, if you just stop the rain this night, I promise you I will read the Bible every day from here on out. Now, as I learned, that prayer often didn't really work. But it showed me, particularly in that phase of my life, that my faith was not necessarily rooted in the right things. My faith was rooted into what I can get out of it. Thankfully, I grew from that. And it comes from these wonderful examples we find in the gospel. Now, the gospel has two healing stories, but I'm only going to focus on one, the first. Because you see, this woman, this Syrophoenician woman, woman, this Gentile, this mother has what a genuine faith should be rooted in love. Her faith is not something that she wants to get something out of it for her own self. Her faith is based solely on the love she has for her daughter. She believes with all her being that this man, this teacher, this rabbi, this healer named Jesus, who we know to be the Messiah of the world, can make her daughter better. Her only agenda when she bows down at Jesus' feet is getting her daughter better. Nothing else. Now, typically, when we come across this gospel passage, and it is in other gospels, but I do appreciate the gospel of Mark because it just is clear and to the point and quick. We don't really necessarily like how Jesus is portrayed in this story. First off, we hear that he does not want to be noticed. He wants alone time. He wants that me time, that time he needs to recharge. Can we blame him? Wherever he went because of who he was and what he did, crowds came by. So he really didn't have that much time to himself. Because if he wasn't with the crowds, he was with the disciples trying to get them to understand who he was. And he had to explain that many, many times, did he not? But I share that because it's important. Because we believe that Jesus was both holy human and holy divine. And on this particular day, it seems that Jesus is having a very human day. And I like that because it helps me relate to him. And I hope you feel the same way. Now, the, it, the, the conversation that happens between this mother and Jesus is it, really sharp. Jesus' words are sharp. And there are scholars who will argue that Jesus maybe said this with a smile because he knew that he was going to eventually heal the, the daughter. And he was just simply testing and conversing with this woman. But I think we run the risk of missing this wonderful point here. Jesus wants to be alone. And this pushy mother, this Gentile, comes to him begging for him to heal her daughter. And Jesus says really, really sharp words, as I've already said. It's not fair for the dogs to eat before the children. The children he's talking about is the children of Israel. And he's saying the dogs are the Gentiles. This is a shot at this woman, this Gentile woman. But does she argue back? No. She humbly responds back with a wonderful response. Even the dogs eat the crumbs from the table where the children eat. She does not care that she has been insulted. She does not take grievance against that because still she is there for one purpose only. To get her daughter well. And she will do whatever it takes for that to happen. Even taking a dent to her pride. And even taking an insult. Because she loves her daughter. That is what's more important than anything else in this world. This woman has genuine faith. That is rooted in nothing but love for another person. It is remarkable. And I, Jesus. If we go by the story that Jesus 
was having a bad day and these words are sharp. It's remarkable to me because that means that this woman's faith moved Jesus to action. He's moved by her response and he does heal her daughter. It is remarkable, good people. This woman's faith is such a wonderful example for all of us. She is one of the more faithful people we encounter in all the gospel. And she's a Gentile. She's a mother. Now, if I asked you who were some of the more faithful people in your lives, you would have probably many different answers. But when I think about this Syrophoenician woman, I can't help think about my grandmother. I challenge all our young people before I go any further to learn the stories of their family, of their grandparents and those who came before them. Because what I found out about my grandmother that just moved me to tears, I heard on her funeral. I did not know her stories or all that she went through. And let me tell you, she went through it every phase of her life journey. As a child, a terrible incident happened to where doctors said she would never, ever be able to have children. And lo and behold, when she got married, she had four boys. But life kept on dealing cruel blows to her. Her fourth child, my uncle, committed suicide when I was only about three years old. It changed her days for the rest of her life. And she carried that pain with her, yet she kept going strong. She kept loving her family and she kept loving my grandfather. Now, I share that to say, my grandmother went through so many different health issues, particularly because of tobacco. And when you live in Winston-Salem and you're under the shadow of R.J. Reynolds, it's hard not to do that. She smoked and smoked and smoked. And eventually it cost her the use of her lungs at a normal capacity. And because of that, she came to death numerous times while I was in middle and high school. And yet she beat all odds. She went against science because she wanted to be there for my grandfather who was also battling cancer. It did not matter that she was in pain. It did not matter that she was in agony. It only mattered that she be there for her family, that she be there for my grandfather. Her will to live, her faith was tied into love for others. And I know that because after my grandfather passed away from cancer, just two months past that, my grandmother went to be with him. Her faith, her life was always about genuine love for others. And because of that, she's one of the most faithful people I will ever have the blessing of knowing. It's so important that we take notice of these wonderful stories in the Bible of people who had genuine faith because we need to model that in our own lives. Too often we make faith about what we can get out of it. And that's never been what it's meant to be. And that's why this Syrophoenician woman is so timely when we encounter it. It's so timely when I personally encounter it because it reminds me to put my faith back on track to where it needs to be, to get it connected to the true source it needs to be connected to, the love of God and Christ and a love for others. I hope today you have found this example to be refreshing in your own faith as well. So once again, I ask, what is your food, faith, excuse me, rooted in? And I want you to take time with that question today. And I want you to have an honest conversation with God. But truly do learn from the amazing example we have here of the Syrophoenician woman who above all else had love for her daughter and that was what her faith was rooted in. Amen.
Please stand. Let us reaffirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Please kneel if you are able. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those on our parish prayer list. Angela, Amanda, Ashley, Bailey, Brandy, Candy, Christy, Crawford, Elizabeth, Gary, George, Helen, Herkley, Hunter, Jackson, Jay, Jane, Jennifer, Kelly, Kempton, Ken, Kais, Kimball, Laura, Libby, Linda, Malcolm, Marcello, Margaret, Matthew, Melanie, Nancy. 
Peter, Phil, Ray, Rob, Sadia, and Sandy. We pray for those serving in the military, especially Alan, Austin, Cameron, Charlie, George, Georgia, Joe, John, Rose, and Tom. We pray for all who are suffering from COVID-19 throughout the world, for strength and protection for all health care workers, that through your loving kindness, they may provide healing, grace, and mercy with compassion, wisdom, and dignity. We pray for Cuba, Haiti, Uganda, and all countries that are in crisis. We especially pray for the people of Afghanistan, U.S. troops and U.S. citizens who remain in harm's way. We ask for your blessing and protection, especially for the women, children, and Christian minorities. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God and in, and in loving memory of James Anderson Wilson, Marie, Mar Maddie Wilson, Frank Merrill Talbot, Helene Mahan Talbot, Hattie Eugenia Wilson, Murdy Clarence. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praying together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us, to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church 
And in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.